How's it going guys, our Triple XC here, and I'm here today with one of my opponents from the tournament we had at Anubis Games and Hobby here in Lafayette, Louisiana. And uh, we're going to be doing a deck profile for you today, because uh, I sent it around to a couple people and a lot of people were really interested, so I wanted the man who made it himself to show it off to you. So Travis, please come in, sir. Yes, yes. That is my uh, great applause there. So, um, this is Travis, guys. He came up with this deck. We're going to go through it, and um, just first thoughts, what did you really... Well, what was your favorite part about your deck? Oh, it's per it's it's perfect. It's perfect. Like I, I mean, I know you're saying like you know, oh wow, it's all set one because I don't have it. I didn't have anything else, but yeah, we were so playing, this like, deck set is one. interesting because there are no resurgence cards in it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, but um, like if I was playing set one meta forever, I think I found the perfect de deck for that. Like, yeah. I wouldn't change a single card about it. Post set one, like I've been playing that deck since like the game came out and like just perfected it. Right. Yeah. Point, yeah. So, like, <laughs> We've been playing for a while, he's been playing the same deck and like perfecting it and like card by card making it right. So we're going to take a look at it in depth here. Travis is going to help me out and we'll see you guys there. So enjoy the intro. Alright guys, we're here and Travis has his deck ready. Um, and uh, he's just gonna kind of roll with this, kind of like the old deck profiles we used to do. I'm just gonna sit along for the ride. So Travis, take it away. Tell these people about this cool deck. Well, um, honestly, it's such a weird. It's a really weird deck because, on the surface, it doesn't really seem that amazing. But it's great. Like one of the greatest strengths of this deck is the fact that no one really knows about it and it kind of wins in really cheesy ways so um for the bakugan um pegatrix it's really just because it's the best chaos bakugan i cannot honestly there's no other bakugan that's as good for chaos as pegatrix i really would wish pegatrix was an ultra like i could play an ultra bakugan instead of pegatrix but her evo is also like super important for this deck so um everything about it is just complimentary uh instead of dragonoid I, but before like we started getting other waves i was playing Antonoid because he's he was the best Pyrus Bakugan, but I've Dragonoids. Been doing that for a while. Yeah, but and most honestly, Mansonoid is one of the best Bakugan to play as like a Bakugan because he's so good when you roll him because he's so easy. he can easily just kick other Bakugan what off the course. What made you change from Mansonoid to Dragonoid? Uh, it's because his stats are better split and he carries two better cores. Okay. It, because we already have like three Green Fists, which is our honestly enough for the Pegatrix. Right. So the Pyrus Bakugan can just be good. Mansonoid's Evo is also really bad, so. There's no point in playing him for his Evo, and I didn't have Dragonoid Ultra's Evo either, but his stats are above curve, and he's just a really strong Bakugan. I know people don't like this for the fact that he kind of throws cores, but honestly, with a lot of practice, it's really not that big of an issue. He's going to get you a Hyper. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It never happens. And then Hydorus. Um, oh, most on, get this man a Hyper, please. Please. I'll, I, I would, I'll love you. Um... <laughs> <laughs> um before this, I was actually when I was playing Mantanoid, this was actually Aurelis Pegatrix, and it was kind of just like the Green Fist deck. And I played that for a long time, and Aurelis Pegatrix is really good, but I really feel like any if you're going to play like a deck competitively, it should be triple color. Unless your Aurelis Bakugan just works so well in your deck. Having three colors gives you access to three different of the best cards of each color, right. which to me is such a huge, like, I noticed so much, a much higher win rate when I started putting Darkest in my deck, because that's Cycling Madness, and Pact of Darkness, and there's a really good card in this deck that synergizes with the whole win condition, so, yeah, and then obviously, these are the cores, you don't want to play any trap cores, there's no, you don't really want to play the Green Fist that only benefit two specific factions, because we're playing triple faction, and that's really yeah. it. That's I really noticed it when that. we played, you were, like, really specific on, like, your core placement, so is there like a certain way you like to set them up when you set it up? Yes. Like say your opponent's core is here, what would you do? Yes, it's always, uh, you set, um, I mean it depends on how they build it. Sometimes they try to put the trap cores certain ways if they're playing a trap core, but you know, right. you cluster the green fists, you put the two red fists together, either like this or this, and then you put the magic shield. So the thing is, is that you know what your opponent's Bakugan is going to be before they roll it, so that lets you choose what you want to go for. So, like for example, I always lead with Hydrus because he's the strongest one. Yeah, and one of the one works pretty well. Yes, and one of the most important things about this deck is not necessarily dealing a ton of damage on the first battle, but just winning the first battle in general because domination is a huge part of this deck. So, you know, if my opponent it's rolling like a really strong Bakugan that can get a really high bonus on their core, well, I might use Hydrus to try to land on the Magic Shield. I'll only deal one damage instead of like the seven I could have gone on that. 
but I won the first battle, and that's all I care about because that right. turns on all the domination cards. Because you picked up two cores a couple times with him against me. Yeah, Hydrus is really good at that. Yeah, so, so that's it, always nice. Oh yeah, with domination, if you pick up two cores, it's just it's always it's just it so is, nice. It's very nice. Because so. I mean, I, I mean, you kind of need that because domination is a really tough mechanic to like really work around because it's really hard to make sure it's always live. Right. But playing cards that help you win battles early, make sure that all your other cards just flow together really well. Right. But that's just the Bakugan line. Yeah. So, all right, we'll uh, move some stuff out the way, and then we will go with the uh, with the deck. So uh, let us have it. All right. So first cards. Uh, triple super shot. Obviously, this should be Holy Flame going to Resurgence. Um, but this card is actually just fantastic. It's one of the best. It was one of the best turn one drops you can play next to Nature's Power, of course, because the card's insane. But just having this card available turn one helps you win a ton more battles, especially when you talk about Hydrus, because part of the thing that's great about this Bakugan lineup is that even though it's B, their B powers are not necessarily the strongest thing that can happen turn one, they can still inflict a ton of damage alongside having a really good B power. So just having things to help them put them over the top turn one is really important. It's like Hydrus Ultra with like a Flaming Fist that's 1050. Most Bakugan can slightly beat that, but most people don't play one-drop cards like this. Not in droves, so um, just drawing this turn one is super important. So after that, uh, one of the best Hayas cards is Light's Courage, of course. Um, this is part of the reason why this deck's good, like, winning the first battle, because there's three different cards that you really want to play on turn two to help you win, and this is one of them. Uh, plus 800 basically guarantees you a victory in the early game, and sometimes it does in the late game too, depending on how things are going. But these are like the Chaos power-up cards, and it's really all you need. And the only other uh, B increasing card that I really play is uh, Inferno Wings, because it's such a good card. With Domination, it turns on Domination, which is so good. Especially when you consider things like Stand Together and Cute Apocalypse and stuff like also that. Also really annoying as an opponent to have to take away all your cores. Oh yeah, and this card this card's <laughs> insane. Like, first of all, it completely wipes out a team attack. Forget your core bonuses from the Bakugan themselves right. and the cores. And so just in a battle in general, it takes away, if I'm landing on my magic shield, you took away my magic shield. That's like a basically a thousand beat power swing on a three cost card that also turns on your effects. It's That's just crazy. It sucks when you're playing Milius and you get that because... Oh, yeah. You think you're, you think you're set with your fancy magic shields and then they, they just disappear. Oh, yeah. I know, oh, I know all about that. All of Inferno. So the first, like, crazy card, and the only other truly offensive action card that we play is Midas Sindius. This right. card is ridiculous. Anyone who plays Pyrus knows that this is, like, an absolute staple. Um, one of the best things about this deck is you have to play it in a way where your opponent doesn't think you have this, and then you just drop it on them. So what you try to do is, even though you can, sometimes you can just win a battle with this by dropping it, but you don't necessarily want to do that, because if your opponent has any type of counter, because you'll notice, there aren't many damage manipulating cards in this deck. So even though my Bakugan have somewhat decent base damage, you're really just dropping this when you know you can auto win. That's one of the, that's one of the greatest strengths about this deck, is it very rarely gets put in positions where it can't win, because this card can just completely steal a battle, or Mac can. So one of the important things you need to know about this deck is knowing when to play these cards because they're the most valuable resource in your deck. So sometimes you want to lead with like Super Shot or Light's Courage, even though you plan on winning with this, because you know your opponent will be able to out, out B power you when you play these cards, it may seem like a waste, but what you're doing is you're taking away their energy from being able to counter you with this card, whether it be like Blue Within the Gate or their own damage boosting cards. So one of the best cards in the deck, and obviously Mac too, but we'll talk about him later. So these are like the only offensive um, action cards in the deck. So next, like, the um, the cards that add consistency. Uh, Cycling Madness is one of the best black cards you can possibly play. Um, and not much to say about this. Hitting it off Dan's insane. Playing it in general is insane. Yeah, it's um, it just sight Like, especially when you're starting to lose... Especially when you're in a losing position where you can cycle through your deck by just... Like, when you only have a couple cards left and you start, like, you play one to draw another one to play another one, and you just completely dwindle down your opponent's hand, you may not have any cards to play to, like, win battles, but you're taking away theirs, too, and you've got some pretty strong Bakugan. You'll notice that we don't play many Evos for those Bakugan, but that's not really a big deal for this deck. Um, alongside that is a Triple Stoic Shot. This card is really good. I don't know why people don't play this on all Chaos decks. This card's insane. It's basically Pot of Greed. <laughs> um, it's, What's that it, card do? Oh, I, I, honestly, I don't even know why I referenced it, but <laughs> but 
<laughs> being able to just draw two cards for basically free is insane. So like this card, Light's Courage and Midas Syndius, are like the prime targets to play turn two. So, ba so it's really nice when you open with all of them, so you know what you have to do to win. So, you know, you roll, let's say you and your opponent both land. You know, it's tempting, like, turn two to want to play this, to draw two cards to make sure, like, even if you miss, you still get to draw two cards. But it's not really worth it. You want to make sure you win that second battle also. So, you know, being able to have this, this, and this turn two. So if you know you can't out damage them, you play this and it's an auto win if you won the first battle. If you can't beat them in B power, you just play this and you auto win because there's very few pe cards people play that damage boost that they can play on turn two or to negate, they can't negate this unless they have like that new card, uh, that blue card that negates anything that's three or less for two. And then you have this, so if your opponent misses and you land, you get to draw two cards. And you may not be doing, even if you don't do too much damage in the early game, just setting yourself up for that victory later is very important. You want to see all the mites, you want to see all the max, you want to make sure all of that stuff is set up to win in the late game. So next, we actually only play one Cute Apocalypse. I just ignore the 500 B power part of the card because you never want to play this in a battle because you basically, when you're consider considering the context of a battle, you're paying four for 500 B. Any deck's going to be able to beat you if you right. tap out to play this card. But the best time to play this card is to wait, you know, until your end step to want to play this while your opponent's tapped out. Or, you know, in Victor's step, when you go to for the team attack, you play this to set up your next play because most of you know... Most people are going to survive most of your attacks in the early game, so you just want to be set up to win in the late stage of the game. So I really only play one of this because it's kind of a brick a lot of the times. It's just really, it's also clutch in other times. You know, sometimes just having your deck is really good with uh, the next card actually uh, skies him to stack it, to hit it with Dan to get it for free. But um, that's just other complex stuff. This card is just, it's a good card. I just can't justify playing more than one of it because it's just not always good unlike uh unlike stoic shot which i mean you draw one you you, you draw one less card but you it's more live most of the time because it's only two you can play it earlier and that's really what's most important you want to have consistency even though you draw more cards that's kind of like consistency but you want to have the consistency to play more of your cards so the next card is sky him uh this is the most flexible spot in the deck uh it's a it's a it's a nice card but this is like the only card i could even consider like taking out this deck at this point um it's really nice with dan to be able to stack the card that he's gonna hit but other than that interaction it's really kind of a brick a lot of the times um but it's really not it's just nice to have it can unbrick your hand in the early stage of the game let's say you win the first battle but your hand's really bad you just play this try to dig for like a stoic shot or a mitocinius to help you win your next battle or something like that this card's really solid uh it's just kind of, it's honestly, in my opinion, like the weaker card, one of the weaker cards in the deck. So this card isn't really, really good. Uh, Curse of Darkest, so uh, two for two, two for minus two, but you can discard a card to make it minus ten. So one thing that's awesome about this is that you combine it with Mac or Mind Ascendius to basically win any battle and you could possibly go up against, unless your opponent's like got like one of those ridiculous damage boosting cards or their Bakugan has ridiculous damage, mm -hmm. which doesn't happen very often at all. So having this available, not only to help you win battles with that, but also basically cons you can consider this like a flip you can play from your hand to basically that's, negate that's any what attack. I use it for, is that in -hand flip almost? Yeah, and that's really, really, that's really, really important just to like kind of have that you know card up your sleeve, so to say, because <laughs> um, you re it's it just helps you not get taken off guard. No, you know, knowing that what I do now, it doesn't com it can't completely stop like a team attack because it only can target one Bakugan, but right. um, it's just a really solid card in general. It's just a really it important helps, though, on the team attack. Oh yes, absolutely. If the leading Bakugan is like crazy. Yeah, and like and most Bakugan are like that, especially when you you know you got triple inferno wing, you can play it. Mm -hmm. So most of the Bakugan are stuck at their base stats, and most people play high B power, low damage Bakugan. So mm -hmm. you're really not looking at too much damage. We play six flips, so usually you're going to be able to block it, but you know that doesn't always happen, and sometimes you don't want to take that chance. Uh, and the last two actions in the deck is Wayne. Uh, I, I'm sorry, Hunter Surge, this card is so much better than the Wax. Wax is terrible. <laughs> um, this card is the sauce. Every Chaos player should be playing at least two of this. Um, this card has so much value because it can destroy anything, regardless of its cost. Um, you know, when you look at Garkin's Gaze, it can hit, like, the best heroes, but it can't hit all of them. But this can hit literally anything, just the exception of the turn it's played. But the thing is that most people are trying to, like, sit, you know, be on curve with their energy, trying to play their uh, Evos during their end step. Very rarely are they, they going to try to play around this card. You know, some people will, 
especially, like I know Kobe does when we play because he knows that this can completely ruin his strategy. But right. you know, you want to you want to have It'll this. Mess you up if you're not expecting it. Yes, and, and it, it's the fact that he killed any cost, and it's just it comes quick, and you just don't realize. Yes. You think you did a good turn three or something, and you're like, oh, there you go. Never mind. Yeah, I mean, it's... Waste it, of your energy. Yeah, and I mean, it helps you get over stuff like... Because obviously when you come from like base Bakugan versus base Bakugan, my deck's got a pretty good advantage. But when you start looking at ridiculously strong Bakugan, like for RLS Carcalius Ultra or Titan, like Ventus, Rock. Titan, <laughs> Ultrox Ultra, like stuff like that, you can't just... You can't deal with it all the time. Mantanoid. 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 Right. Ventus Mantanoid is a... As a pain against the deck because he's got so much damage because mm -hmm. they're playing green, but just having this as an out and especially like you don't always want to just throw it on their Bakugan. Um, you want to wait until you can win a battle with it. You know your opponent taps out in a way to where playing this is going to give you a huge advantage in the battle, so they can't just play another one after you kill it. But yeah, this is a super staple card. I can't imagine playing a Chaos deck without this card. Um, and then going into the heroes. Uh, triple Dan, Dan's it's it's self-explanatory. Dan's really good. I wouldn't say he's completely mandatory. One of the things that I think is very important when you play a deck with Dan is you need to have a lot of a lot of cards that do things besides give B power. Like you need to have utility cards that like sell like draw cards or permanents like your um your Evos, other heroes, stuff like that. So Dan can get permanent long term value instead of like you know hitting like a B power card when you your opponent missed or you know. I mean, obviously, you know, it kind of sucks when you hit a flip, but that's not a big deal. You know, and you also have Sky Sim sometimes to make sure you don't do that. Another cool thing about having a flip, especially if it's like Pact of Darkness, is like, you know, you flip it and now you know, now you know for a fact that I can just throw this battle and just let the Pact, you know, eat all the you damage. You waste your energy if you're yeah. cautious. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you want to win anyway. But it's just good to have that safety net on top, knowing that you have that safety net on top of your deck, or like if it's, if it's stand together, you know you can try to contest the battle with um, Inferno Wing. Your opponent can win back, but now you're standing together is live, so even if you lose, it's fine. Question Does it help the deck if all three of your Dans are hex? Does that yes. make the deck better? Yes, obviously. A, you always draw, you, 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 draw, you draw foils more than you draw non foils. Every Yu Gi Oh player knows this, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, it's very important. And then. Uh, I also recently got this all hex uh, triple <laughs> Mac. This is like the best card. This is the most important card in the deck. This card's ridiculous. Um, you wanna you wanna start playing. You wanna get these on the board before you start playing Mac, especially when you look at stuff like Hydra's Ultra, because you know he has that base one damage. Or like if Pegatrix doesn't hit the Green Fist, they may not have huge damage values. But starting to establish like multiple Max on the board makes your Might of Sinius way stronger into basically auto win buttons. And that's kind of the, that's what you want to get to. Um, you don't, but you also have to consider the situation. You know, sometimes you have four energy and it's either like you can play Mac or you can play, you can play like uh, Lights Courage and Might of Sinius. And sometimes that's better to play around your opponent's cards because if you tap out for Mac, you know, maybe you're winning when you play it, but your opponent can Evo or play some kind of damage boosting card. You know, those are kind of rare that people put in their decks, but it's still a possibility, so you don't want to lose to that. So knowing how to play these cards properly is how this deck is actually good. You know, you can't really just... This deck's not really like autopilot, you know? So, yeah, obviously best card in the deck, Mac. And then the Evos, I only play... Titan Pegatrix. I don't. I don't play Evo. I don't play Hydrus as Evo because it's kind of booty. Um, yeah, was a, a lot of people were saying like, "Wow, he doesn't play Evos." Yeah. yeah. So the thing about Hydrus as Evo is, you know, he kind of is strong. He's strong on the Flaming Fist, you know. But the thing is that you're paying three for plus two hundred B, and like sometimes you get like better damage with Shadow mm -hmm. Strike. I mean, it's okay, but it's not worth the investment in the deck and then i would actually i actually would play dragonoid ultras evo it's only Never. two for plus basically plus three plus three for two it's actually pretty good and having more permanence in your deck is important for dan but uh this is the this is obviously the best evo in like the deck because on a green fist this is 11 damage if you play mac that's 13 you're, you can't lose if you if you play that against someone and you hit them big you do this a few times and you just win the game so uh, definitely best Evo. Like I said, I would play that because even though these stat lines are okay, you want your Bakugan to scale better in the late game. You don't really need the Evo Fighters for him to still be good in the late game because 800 is still a solid number. But Dragonoid can have a tougher time, especially if you don't have Mac or Might in your hand. So having that little bit of buff on him is actually really good. But yeah, 
Titan Pegasus is ridiculous. Just having that super high damage value is insane. Sometimes you just win the battle outright because landing on a Green Fist means it's 1650. It's just really good. And then the last cards are the flips. So we play Triple Stand Together, Triple Pack. Um, For Nate, reasons. Yeah. <laughs> um, the only re I actually really don't like Stand Together. Um, it's a, it's In this deck, it's good because you have access to Inferno Wings. But I really wouldn't play this in like any other Chaos deck because... One of the biggest issues with this card is that it's never the condition for it is never live constantly, unlike pack to where you know you can always you can always discard a card, but domination on a flip is difficult because you have to consider it like this. So, you know, when you're playing the game normally, let's say you have like, you know, your uh stalling shot, like you win the first battle, now you can play it on turn two, you know, maybe you lose the turn two battle and you know, now you're even, and then you draw this and it's even, but maybe you win the battle and then you can play it, but now you only have to be one ahead on when the turn begins to play this card. Like any other action, like domination card. But the problem with Stand Together is you have to be two ahead, because let's think about it like this. Let's say you win the first battle, then turn two girls around and you lose. Well, now you're even, so this card's not going to do anything. Um, but, the, but if you have to win the first battle, then the second battle, and then lose the third battle for this thing to actually work if you're not using Inferno Wings... I don't like that at all. Like, sometimes it just works because you picked up two cores. But that doesn't happen very often. So, I really don't think this card is really worth it in many Chaos decks unless you're, like, focused on, like, really building those cores. Like, Titan Millies is kind of... It's okay in... Like, in my Titan Millies deck, I actually don't play this. I play the the, the vanilla one that negates any... The three... For, yeah, I think that's much better because having that consistency... Because really, even in this deck most of the time, this card is basically just says pay for <laughs> to stop an attack right. this domination effect almost never actually works even in a deck meant to play it so like i i play it because this, this it's still better than the three flip in this deck but i really don't think this is a great card in general i wish we had something better but pack the darkness obviously you can't complain about that like this card's yeah, ridiculous one of the best cards in the game absolutely so. all right yeah. well thank you for doing that i'm sure a lot of people learned a lot and uh if you like this deck profile, guys, I'll leave a link to it down in the description. Uh, I'll probably post it on Twitter, too. Uh, and uh, you can see this deck in action against me, beating my butt. <laughs> uh, and in a later video that I, I still got to edit and work on. Um, but, yeah, man, thanks for doing this. Uh, if you guys like this video, leave a like down in the description. If you have any comments about how he played the deck or anything you would do differently, leave them down there as well. I can uh, respond to them. Yeah, he'll uh, he'll be there talking to you. Um, and uh, if you like this, uh, let me just get these out of the way. If you like this play mat, uh, <laughs> if you haven't gotten around to getting one of these bad boys yet, this is a matrix mat, and uh, you can check those out in a link down in the description as well. We make these, we make customs for you if you want to go check those out. And if you go to inkgaming.com to get this image printed, you can use our uh, coupon code RXXC10 to get 10% off on that order, or any order on Ink Gaming, as a matter of fact. So, if you guys want to check that out, it would help us out a lot. It helps out the channel. We get a little bit of kickback. And, uh, yeah, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you guys later. Bye.